good time now, yeah? <laughs> time to listen to God's voice, yeah? It's not about us, not, not about our rules, our desires, but His desire, yes? His message. And I know that He wants to, to change a little bit <laughs> what is inside of my heart and also your heart if you allow Him. The Bible says that Jesus, He is in the door of your heart, knocking. Are we able to open this door today? <laughs> to Jesus enter and have a dinner with you, have a time, fellowship with you, and give some advice. Amen? For you, for your family, for your faith. So be ready to receive from Him today. Amen? Hallelujah. So I have a question. Imagine it with me, okay? You are at home. You are in your house. And suddenly starts a big fire there. Everything is burning. Imagine that. Okay? Everything is burning around you. And you have only one minute to leave the house. Only one minute. Everything is burning. You are feeling the fire <laughs> coming to you. You have only one minute left left to leave the house what would you take with you and I, I i can help you we have so many things yes <laughs> so maybe you can take with your laptop i don't know your fridge <laughs> quite expensive <laughs> or your money your wallet or your pro your phone you have many things there or the microwave it's so expensive as well, yeah? My landlord bought one two years ago. Man, so expensive. <laughs> what else? Your 50-inch TV. Yes, with a Wi-Fi. Left. What's your choice? Tell two person beside you your choice. <laughs> your dog. <laughs> your cat, I don't know. <laughs> What's your choice? <laughs> hmm? <laughs> Tell your choice to them. <laughs> so, I can tell you, I can tell you, if your answer is, I take my family. <laughs> you are on the right path. <laughs> Did you forget that you have kids? You have wife? <laughs> you have husband? Yes. I'll take my family. This is the right, yes? If you thought that I need to save my kids, yeah, my whole family, you are on the right path. Because today, the message is protect your family. <laughs> This is the message. Protect your family. Why? Nowadays, people are finding more pleasure in material things, in their careers or hobbies, than their own family. Isn't it? And the Bible is full of examples of families that were good and families that were evil. The Bible will have both stories. And today, I'd like to read a passage with you that teach us a great lesson about family. And my desire today is that by this message, the end of this message, you'll be loving your family again, giving your life for them, and protect them for this evil world. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let's go. First Samuel chapter 30, from verse 1 to 4. And I read for you, you can follow here. David and his men reached Ziklag, a town. Ziklag on the third day. Now the Amalekites had raided the Negev and Ziklag. They had attacked Ziklag and burned it and had taken captive the women and everyone else in it, both young and old. They killed none of them but carried them off as they went on their way. When David and his men reached Ziklag, the town, they found it destroyed destroyed by fire and their wives and sons and daughters think captive so David and his men wept aloud 
until they had no strength left to weep. Wow. <laughs> David and his soldiers were living in Ziklag. Yes, there was a town there. And say with me, Ziklag. Ziklag. You're going to get the meaning later, okay? And David was living there with his family. But one day, David left his family in Ziklag. And he went off to fight a war. And while he was trying to plan a war against the enemy, the Bible says that the Amalekites, their enemies, went down and attacked Ziklag, David's family. As they had no soldiers there, they destroyed the city with fire and took all wives, sons, daughters, children, captive. And when David arrived in Ziklag again, he saw the fire. <laughs> Everything burned to the ground. And his family was, had been taken captive. What a bad surprise, yes? And I can tell you, family is a blessing from God. Family is a blessing from God. After your salvation, pay attention. After your salvation, family is the most important thing we you ever been here on earth? Family. You can have friends. They are special. They bring joy to you. But one day, they go away. Yes or no? You can have a job. You can make a good amount of money there. But one day, the company will close. Or they will fire you. <laughs> no more job. Or you retire. You can have a beautiful house. You may be very happy there, but one day it will need maintenance. Yes? You need to fix something. And you might think, oh, it's better to simply move to a new house. I need a new house. But family, family is forever. Wife, husband, children, parents, they are forever. They are with you. On your good days, on your bad days, <laughs> and you can learn so much from them. You can teach them the way of heaven. And other things may change us. Things around us, the environment, yes, the circumstances can change us. But we always start and end with a family. Yes? Friends move away. Jobs change. But families remain forever. Amen. And the Bible says that if you fear the Lord, you'll be happy with your family. Look what it says in Psalms 128, verse 3 and 4. The Bible says, Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine with the innermost part of your house. Your children will be like olive plants around your table. Behold, for so shall the man be blessed and divinely favored who fears the Lord and worships him with obedience blessed family God has it for you amen a blessed family but in this story of David <laughs> we see that David forgot about the protection of his own family he forgot about Ziklag his wife his children he was so worried about the war that he forgot to save his life his family and what a lesson we have here. Family is more important than everything else in this life. I mean, talking about earth, yes? Not spiritual things. Family is more important than everything else. Can you listen to me? Even from the church. Yes. If you have some line, you go to God, family, church and job yes you need to protect your ziklag amen and today we can see many people change things they are making war against the enemy yes they are working they are helping people they are they are, they are changing the world <laughs> but they are losing their families this is what is happening nowadays they are taking care of others they are giving so much time to people and friends, but they have no time for their families. They spend eight hours or ten hours working, 
every day, so hard, but they cannot spend two hours per day with their families. Two hours, one hour, 30 minutes <laughs> with their families. How many people are good businessmen? They are successful men, but their own family are a failure. Even the church of God, how many leaders, pastors have a nice ministry. They are good preachers, good leaders, but their family are destroyed. Their marriage are failing. Why? Because they are making war. This is good. They are making war. They are working. They are investing a lot of time in other things, but rather than their own family. And it's dangerous. Take care of that. David didn't take care of his family. He was too excited to make war, <laughs> to do the work for God, yes? But he forgot about his family, and it is a risk. And look what the Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8. It's the Bible we said. If anyone fails to provide for his own, or for his family, and especially for those of his family, he has denied the faith by disregarding its precepts. And it's worse than an unbeliever who fulfills his obligation in these matters. So you are denied the faith if you are not taking care of your family. You can try to change the world. That's good. <laughs> you can try to make war against hell. Yes? To help the poor. It's really nice things to do. But if you are... If you don't take care of your family, you are denying your faith. This is the Bible. So today I want to remind you that if you are a human, are you a human? Yes? <laughs> yeah, no, not a robot here. You have a family. I want to remind you today. You have dad, mom, you have wife, husband, you have children, son, daughter. If you are a husband, you have a wife. If you are a wife, you have a husband. If you are single, you have parents, you have relatives, so you have family. Take care of them. Amen? So David came back to Ziklag, and when he arrived there, he found everything destroyed, burned down by his enemy. And his family had been taken captive as well. So David and his soldiers wept. They cried a lot until they had no strength to weep more. It was so frustrating to find Ziklag, his family, his house, totally destroyed, burned with fire. And they cried a lot. And it was good because they realized what they had bad done. Yes? They did done bad. They left their town unprotected. They didn't think about their families. They were soldiers. Eh? men of war but they forgot <laughs> soldiers should think about this stuff protection but they didn't but this feeling of desperation was good because few minutes after they start coming up with a plan to get their families back and I can tell you a few minutes later God can give you a strategy to bring your family back to God amen Look what they did after crying. The Bible says, 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6. David was greatly distressed because the men were talking of stoning him. Look that. <laughs> the same guys that were making war with him, now they, we need to, to put the guilt in someone. <laughs> it's not mine. So David, you, you need to be stoned. Each one was beaten in spirit because of his sons and daughters. But David found strength in the Lord, his God. So first, the men cried for their families. They realized that they made a mistake. But then, they found someone to blame. David. And here we have a lesson. That is hard to say, but we need. <laughs> do not blame others for the work you must do. Do not blame others for the work you and me, we must do. We always find someone to blame when things go wrong. Yes, in our family, 
but this guilt one is never ourselves it's always someone else yes because him because her because the school because the church <laughs> because the government yeah it's your problem not mine we say yeah oh, if my kids have difficulties in school we say i think they should change this teacher she's not a good teacher yes because the blame is not mine <laughs> it's not my fault <laughs> if my kids get into a fight with someone i think to myself where is that child's father <laughs> where because my child is an angel <laughs> they would never do anything like this we think like that <laughs> if my marriage is not going well it's the pastor's fault he didn't teach me well enough <laughs> his fault if my kids don't want to go to the church it's the church's fault they don't feel well there the environment yes they are bored we must accept the blame today you and I we need to accept the blame we have to take the blame and say it out it's my fault if my family is not at Jesus feet it's my fault it's your fault as well but what did David do Samuel 3rd verse 6 part B but David found the strength in the Lord his God hallelujah and today I invite you to take the blame yes but present it to God find the strength in the Lord and do something to save your family amen do something to save your family do not accept the way your family is going find the strength in the Lord like David and when David he found the strength he ran to take his family back and look what the Bible says in verse 17 and 19. David fought them from dusk until the evening of the next day. And none of them, the enemies, got away. Except 400 young men who rode off on camels and fled. David recovered everything the Amalekites, the enemies, had taken. Including his two wives. Nothing was missing. Young, old boy or girl plunder or anything else they had taken david brought everything back hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah now we have a practical things to learn here with david because david he fought yes he recovered everything the enemy had taken he brought his family back he brought out, he brought everything back so i tell you protect your family Protect your family. Protect your ziklag. Ziklag here means your house, your marriage, your relationship with your children. Protect ziklag today. Protect there. Learn it from David. He made a mistake. He accepted the blame. He ran to fix his mistakes to bring his family back. And now I want to talk to the parents. Yes, if you are a dad or a mom, I'd like to talk with you. Protect your family. Be a father. It's a simple phrase, yes? Father. But what means father for you? <laughs> Be a mom. There is something you need to do if you are a father or a mom. If you are a father, so this is your role. You have to protect your children. You are the one that sets the limits. You must tell them what they need to do, what do yes, no, and enough mean. They need a leader. Every child is waiting for a leader. And I work with the youth for many years, and I can see that. When they have no father, a figure of father or mom, they are looking for a leader. And if we have some youth, that has that spirit of leader everybody goes to him everybody go there and say what should i do <laughs> and he says amen let's do something wrong let's mess some place yes are you with me yes i i i'm with you so we go i did that <laughs> when i was young because it's cool you know to have some friends and see some leaders around us 
but all children, they are waiting for you, Father. For you, Mom, to set the limits. You need to say to them, it's good to do, it's not good to do, it's enough, stop right now. You need to do that. Yesterday we, we were at K KFC in Armagh, yes, we were with my family, I was with them, and suddenly I looked to a table beside us, and there was like 15, 10, 15 kids, but kids like 8, 10 years old, you know, and there was a woman there, and she was taking care of them, and after they ate everything, she said, now, I, I heard, now you can go outside, stay there, and now you clean everything, and I looked to that, <laughs> I told to Lila, what's she doing? She's, she's teaching them, like, you can do a mess, yes, <laughs> and I clean to you, and all the boys, oh, okay, <laughs> that's fine, and we go, because she's the leader, what is that? <laughs> You need to te teach your children to clean up everything, to clean all the mess. You need to clean them to help you, to be a helper. You need to clean the, the value of money, yes? The value to be in God's presence, the value of this church. You are the leader of your house, mom and dad. You're supposed to be limits, not pastor, not me, not the youth leaders. It's you. You need to go there and fix. Because today many parents are giving a gun to their kids. <laughs> what? Yes. <laughs> what does a gun bring? Death. Destruction. And a child is not the right person to have a gun. Because they cannot manage that. But today they have guns. And what's the gun's name? Phone internet, social media, TikTok, Instagram, and we go, YouTube, TV, and we as parents, we are giving them a gun, can you imagine, you, you, you go to a, a child, she's eight years old, seven, you said, oh, this is a gun, take care of that, okay, <laughs> don't be a bad use of that, don't use to kill others, just to, for protection, this is what we are doing to our child, yes, giving a gun to them. Many kids are dying because of this power gun called the internet. And I'm not telling you, okay, take all the internet, it's not about that, I'm not radical, okay, it's not about that. But you probably don't know, but Satan is using bad people to put many ads, advertising, between cartoons and movies for kids. And these ads lead them to homosexual and sexual content. I've seen that. I've seen that. People that I know, they are seeing the same things. Do you know that? But Paul, you can say, I'm supervising my kids. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> I have many apps here, yes, <laughs> that I know everything. I know what they are watching. That is good, but not enough. It's not enough. We are going to the right place, but not enough. Because between one video and the next, they can see bad jokes, porn, sexual stuff. It's serious, church. And a research says, pay attention, a research says that children from eight years old start to see porn on the internet. Do you know that? How old is your kid? <laughs> Seven, eight? Probably he saw she watched not because their fault my yours <laughs> it's a research that did you ask them about that did you check one research says did you know that never never in human history has there been such a sharp decline in cognitive abilities in our generation yes did you know that just 30 minutes a day in front of a screen is enough for a child's intellectual development to start to be affected? It's science, okay? It's not Bible. Science. For the first time, guys, for the first time, this generation is less, has less intelligence 
than others. Yes, it's true. Google that. Search. <laughs> because social media and internet. 30 minutes can affect the kid's intellectual development. Do you know how many times the teenager has a phone in front of screen every day? The research says five hours. 30 minutes is enough to affect here. And probably your teenagers, my teenagers, they are having this struggle. Five hours, my God. What are they watching? What they are feeding their minds with? What they are feeding their souls? There are so many kids with depression today and sadness. This is the reason. Too much scream. This is the problem. Too much scream. Take them off of the screams. You don't need to take it to zero, okay? The, the kids, they are there. Probably, are, oh, pastor, come on. <laughs> You're going to do that. Don't take it to zero, okay? But control. Manage that. Reduce that. Spend time with them. Be together. Be a family. <laughs> One day, I saw a child from church use an app called Omigo. Do you know what's that? Omigo. Like, you have friends. Yes? It's supposed to be over 18. Yes. But between one friend and another, do you know what, what appears to them? A man naked. In our children's phone, it's serious church. I said to Pastor Mars, Pastor, I need to give this message because God is speaking to me. It's hard to say that, but we need to open our eyes. And when I say we need, it's we, it's us. Because I'm a father as well. I have two. <laughs> I need to take care of them. I don't want to lose them. I don't want. So protect your family. How? Check their phones and reduce their screen time. Practical way. Do that, please. Check their phones today. During the lunch. Can I have your phone? Can, can I? know? Give me your phone. <laughs> you are dead, yeah? You have to set a limit. Give me your phone. Start to see everything that there. Check their phones and reduce their screen time. They need you to be a blessing in the future. They need you. I invite you to take the phones from your kids or teenagers and check. Have a look. And forget what the word says, yes? Because the word says, oh, you are, not, you are disrespecting their privacy. Which privacy? <laughs> when we are at home, I say to Adam and Ellen, which privacy do you have? You are my son. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> you have no privacy, <laughs> of course. When you go out from this home, yes. What are you going to have? But today, no. Please, be a father. Be a father. Be a leader. They need that. Yes? So church, protect your kid. Another, protect your fa family. Bring them to the church. You tell me that your kids doesn't want to come to church, to kids ministry, yes? To youth ministry. And you say, that's fine, yeah, you know, it's, your, it's his choice. Yeah, because I cannot bring them, you know, so uh, impression then, yes? Well, so can, can, they can choose not to go to church, but when they don't want to go to school, what are you going to do? There you say, no, you need to go, Yeah. <laughs> When they have appointments, go to the doctor. Ah, oh, Father, I don't want to go. No, you have to go. What about the church? <laughs> and the church is your choice. No. It's your role to be a father and a mom and to show the direct guidance, the guidance, the way that they need to walk. Look what the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. It's for fathers and mothers here. Start the children off the way they should go. And even when they are old, they will not turn from it. It's Bible. You cannot complain against Bible. Yes? <laughs> it's your role. If you don't do now, probably going to reap a bad harvest, teenagers and youth aids. So it's now, church. It's now. Another, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6 and 7. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress. Print them on your children. The Bible. Print them. 
talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Oh, say, oh, oh. Pro protect your family. <laughs> Have your church at home. <laughs> Have your church at home. Don't wait like me, Marcio, Fabiana. Okay, they will take care of my children. On Sunday, they can teach Misa, all the teachers from Kids Minutes. They will teach them. <clears throat> it's your role. Teach them the right way to walk with God. Impress them. Print the Bible over them every day. Have devotion time every day with them. Spend time, church. 30 minutes. One hour. You have 24 hours per day. Give one hour for your family. Invest them. Talk about the commandments when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, when you get up every day. Have a time with them. Amen. So family is a blessing from God. Don't forget that. If your house is in fire, don't forget your family. Take them. They are the first that you need to protect them because family is more important than everything on earth and please today be a man be a woman do not blame others for the work you must do and protect your family be a parent amen be a parent they need a leader every kid needs a leader and protect your family as I told you, please do that. Check their phone. It's for your good. <laughs> you are doing a favor for your child. Yes? Even you can find something wrong there. Go slow. Yes? Go slow. Restart again. <laughs> Pray together. Lead them to repentance. To understand what is wrong. To restart again this relationship with God. Bring them to church. You can say to them, you can choose, go to church or go to church. <laughs> I give them the choice for you. Yeah? What are you going to do? <laughs> church or church? <laughs> it's church. Oh, come on. I remember when I was like 90, 10 years old. I was there. My father came. Paulo, you need to wake up. We are going to church like 8 a.m. in the morning on Sunday. <laughs> oh, father, come on. I don't want to go. <laughs> You have no choice. <laughs> I grew up like that. You have no choice. Come on, go. And today I'm here. <laughs> blessed, blessed be God's name. Thank you for my father. He taught me the right way to go. Protect your family. Have a church at home. Do that. Bring God's presence to your family, to your house. Yes? No more fire to burn everything, but a fire from the Holy Spirit <laughs> to burn all sin, yes? All weaknesses, all doubts that they have. Help them to go to God's presence. Amen. And to finish now, I have two challenges for you and for me. Because we learned that we have a family. A family is the most important thing here on earth, Yes after Jesus and his salvation. The most important thing that we have here is a family. And do you have a, a father or a mom? Or do you have some relatives that you are close? Maybe you can do right now. Show your love to them. When? Now. Do you have internet? <laughs> so I challenge you to take your phone now and send a message. If you have a father or a mom or a brother or a sister far, they are not here. Show your love to them now. I give it to you two minutes to write a message. And if you have a problem to write something to your parents, it's probably because you have a problem to fix. <laughs> oh, but you know, Paul, I'm not talking with them anymore, you know, because we have a problem in the past. Protect your family. <laughs> Protect your family. So I give it to you two minutes now to take the phone. Send them. And probably they will receive a big surprise, good surprise. A big I love you. <laughs> or we need to talk. We need to talk. Do that. Because family is more important than everything on earth. Family. 
I'll do my later, okay? I have my, no, my phone is not here. I'll send to my father and my mom and my sister as well. Do that. Tell to them, to them, I love you. Or if you need to talk, tell to them, we need to talk. <laughs> I'll ring to you. I'll call you later. <laughs> no answer. <laughs> This is the first challenge. Send a message to them. You have kids, they are not here. Do that today, yes? To be good for you. And also the second challenge, this is the reason I brought all the kids here. Uh, so uh, Josias and the teachers, yeah, Misa, maybe, I don't know. You can help all the, the kids go to their parents, okay? You're gonna receive your kids now because you're gonna pray together. And you, you, as a father and mom, you're going to put your hands over them. And you're going to bless them. Because you are a leader. The leader of your house. It's your role. Not my or pastor. You need to put your hand and bless them now. So we have a little mess now. Don't you worry. <laughs> the noise, yes. Don't you worry. But go. All family, yes. <laughs> my, my daughter, go to mom. <laughs> go to mom. Don't you worry. If you have no space, you can stand up, you can be in the corners, I don't know. If your family is big. <laughs> we have no chairs enough. Don't you worry. It's not a problem for that. Amen. How many kids we have here? Wow. Praise God. This is our church as well. If you don't know, every Sunday we have a church at Hope Cafe for Children. <laughs> we have a service meeting there. Praise God. Hallelujah. So you can find your kids. You can find your children. Stay connected with them. Put them on your lap if you want, we, if you don't have chair. Stand up if you want, go to a corner. Don't you worry. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So, I invite you to be close to your family now, okay? You can hug them, be together, close your eyes. And Father, you are the first. Bless them. <laughs> Do a, make a prayer for them. Say how she is special for you. How your son is special. Is a prince. Is a princess of God. Because they need to feel your love. They need to know that you are the leader of your house and the mom as well. Go put your hand over them and pray. Give your blessing. You are the leader. You are the priest. You are the pastor of your house. Go there right now and bless them. Say how they are important. How they have value. <laughs> and tell to them from now on I will spend time with you. From now on, I'll invest my time with you as well. If you have no kid, you are, you are with your wife or girlfriend, boyfriend, pray together. Bless your future. Bless now. Hallelujah. Children need you. Every child needs you. Needs a father. Needs a mom. Protect your Ziklag. Protect your town. From now on, protect your family. Problem is in fire and you don't know. <laughs> you didn't know until today. Your house is in fire. Everything is burning there. What you take? What are you going to take from there? Material things? Money? Or your family? Look to your kids. Look to your marriage right now. Bless your marriage. 
Remember the love that God gave to you on the first day. Remember your parents right now. Pray for them. Family, protect your family. Protect your family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pray for them. Hallelujah. My family belongs to you, Jesus. My children belong to you. Like Joshua, we say today, I don't know about others, but me and my family will serve the Lord forever. If everything is burning inside of my house, from now on, I give to you, Father, all the, the leadership. I give to you all the guidance. Please guide us. Help us to put down the fire. Help us to the enemy. Don't come against us and destroy everything. No more. From now on, put your angels surrounding us, surround our ziklag, our town, our family, our house. Give us protection. Protection from this world. Protection from the enemy, against enemy in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Maybe we are trying to make war. We are trying to help others. We are trying to conquer the world. We are trying to have a good job. This is good, Father. We have a good heart for that. Good reasons. But we cannot forget about our kids. We cannot forget about our house. So from now on, give us protection. Your love. We take the blame. Sometimes we are wrong. We commit mistakes. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us. And help us to renew our faith in you. Restore my family. Restore my marriage. Restore your church. In Jesus' name, bring your kingdom upon us. A kingdom of peace. A kingdom of justice. A king of joy. Kingdom of joy in Jesus' name, Lord. I bless all this church. I bless all families here right now. Stay with them. No more attack from enemy. No more forget my family and go to the war. No more. Give us this kind of protection. We need you. Help us to set limits to our children. To say to them as a leader, yes, no, it's enough. Go through this way, enter to this gate, and you're going to find heaven, you're going to find Jesus Christ, you're going to live a better life, help us to be reference, an example, a good example to our kids, to our family, in Jesus' name, Father, in Jesus' name, hallelujah, also, Father, I pray right now, bless our week, stay with us, Father, Help us to understand this word that not comes from man, but from you. Help us to pay attention in every word that you gave to us now. And to have a blessed week in your presence, Father. Make us strong. While people are trying to blame others, like that, that friends of David. Help us to be like David, to find strength in the Lord. To change everything and to go back and restore our family, to take everything back again. In Jesus' name, Father, be blessed your name and bless us. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Take care of your family. Protect your marriage. Protect your children. In Jesus' name, have a blessed week. Amen.